Shalom, brothers and sisters. For this week's Sabbath service, we're going to do another edition of In Dave's Van. I uh, had to take my daughter to work and have a lot going on right now, so I wasn't going to make a video. But something happened this morning, and so I decided to go ahead and record this. I'm just stopping while I'm on the road to record this video to give you guys something to, to think about today because based on what happened this morning, I realized that this topic, this week's topic, is far more involved and important than I was making it out to be. I initially thought, this is the doctrine of Christ. It's so simple. It's just, you know, accept Jesus as your personal savior. Pick up your cross and follow him. Uh, I'll, I'll put this the scripture and a link to the uh, uh, article in the description below. But to me, it's just so simple and so easy to understand. I thought, hey, you know what? People that are meeting together to worship this weekend, this is something they can do on their own. And then this morning, while I was getting things together, I was having a conversation. So I'm doing my my. Uh, talk to text to have a conversation with these these uh, Protestant brothers. And when I say brothers, I mean brothers in Christ. I don't know if they're related or not. Um, and, you know, they were trying to do the whole um, you have a bird in your hand behind your back. I don't know if you know the story, but there's, there's an old story. Um, I believe it's a, a, a Native American story where someone goes to the, the wisest person in the village and he has a bird behind his back and he says, is the bird alive or dead? And the, re the response is, that's up to you. If I say that it's alive, you can crush the bird and kill it and show me it's dead and that I'm wrong. But if I say that the bird is dead, then you'll show me the live bird. So really the choice is, is in your hands. And so they were they were asking some questions. It was kind of funny. It was like, you know, um, are you a sinner? And I was like, you know, I'm born again in Jesus Christ. Um, thanks for asking. And uh, uh, I, I understood what was happening here and, and what I thought was going to happen is what happened. When I said, you know, that, that before accepting Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, I was a sinner, but now I'm saved in Christ. They're like, oh, you say you're saved in Christ? The Bible says that everyone's a sinner. Um, so therefore, you don't follow the Bible. And I'm like, I said that I was a sinner. Now now I'm born again, but I mean, we're all growing in grace. Oh, you think you're growing in grace? Well, no one's a sinner if you're saved. So, I mean, they, they totally tried to pull that. And I... It doesn't bother me. I find that kind of stuff to be absolutely adorable. Um, I, I, I know it makes them feel good about themselves that that they're that they're winning. I don't know what they're winning, but you know, if, if they need that little ego boost, that's that's fine. You know, what's important to me is that I love and accept them as fellow Christians. But as the conversation moved on, something was said that kind of triggered me. And not triggered me like in a, it made me angry, but triggered me and it made me concerned. And I knew that I was going to look really bad asking this question. I had made a comment about how I don't worship the scriptures and they were like, you're a liar. You're saying we worship the scriptures. I'm like, I didn't say that. I said, I don't worship the scriptures. I'm not telling you what you do or what you believe. I'm not trying to project myself or anything on you at all. Um, but I had to ask them, I said, based on something, a comment they made, <clears throat> I had to ask, do you believe that Jesus is the Christ? And the Holy Spirit was very, very strong. It, it, it reminded me of a scripture in the Bible, in the epistles, 1 John uh, 4, 1 through 3. And I'll, I'll put those in the description below as well. But the general idea of, the, of, of those, those verses is that not all spirits are of God and that we have to test the spirits. And how do we test them? we ask the Spirit if Jesus is the Christ. And this is something I've talked about before, and it's something I haven't really fully understood because the Spirit's told me, hey, I want you to write an article about this. I want you to talk about this. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I I do, but at the same time, you know, the, the demons that were cast out of the pigs are cast out of the uh, legion and put into the pigs knew that Jesus was the Christ. So, just asking that question, does that, does that really work? I'd never seen it happen practically. 
And so I will confess to you that I, I had doubts. I was like, you know, this is an epistle. How seriously do we take it? I'm like, well, it's all we've got. It's what the Lord's given us. It's what the Lord's telling me to, to say and so to share. And so I did. And now here comes this day and the Lord's reminding me of that scripture. And he's, he's telling me, this is important. You need to ask them this question. And so I quoted them that scripture. And they told me that they weren't reading Bible verses that I was sharing with them because they were too long. And so I broke it down. You know, I was like, you know, here's this. You can go look it up. This is where you'll find it. This is the first verse. This is the second verse. This is the third verse. You know, this is why I'm asking. This is why it's important. I need to know if we're going to have this conversation. Are you a Christian like I am? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Can you testify of Jesus Christ like I do? Because that's the thing that unites us as Christians. We don't have to have the same theologies, but we need to believe that Jesus is exactly what the Bible in 1 John, I'm sorry, not 1 John, the Gospel of John, first chapter says that he is the word made flesh, that Jesus is the creator and that all the creation came by and through him and nothing that was created had, was done without him, right? And I asked them, you know, can you, can you testify of this? And they just lashed out violently. And I just didn't understand it. And finally, finally, one of them said, what did Peter say? But I wasn't asking them what Peter believed. I know what Peter believes. It's in the book of Matthew. Everybody that reads the Bible, studies the Bible, knows what Peter believed. I wanted to know what these brothers believed. And they, they couldn't answer. And that's when it hit me, you know, why is this conversation happening today of all days? What lesson can I take from this? And it's the importance of understanding the true doctrine of Jesus Christ. And that doctrine is simplicity itself. Believing that Jesus is the Christ. Believing that he is exactly who the scriptures say that he is. Who the Holy Spirit testifies to us that he is. And so my message for you today, my thought for you today about the doctrine of Christ is this is the doctrine. It's not a theology. It is the doctrine because it's the solid foundation that all of us have to have as Christians. If we don't have that solid foundation, that knowledge that Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ, the Word made flesh, if we don't understand this to our very souls as a part of who we are, we have nothing to build upon. It's like the scripture, uh, the, the parable that Jesus shared about the, the man, the two men. One builds the house upon the rocks and one builds the house upon the sand. That revelation that we receive, I mean, we can have a philosophical understanding. We can think, you know what? It makes sense. Sure, Jesus is the Christ. Why not? That's building your foundation on the sand because someone else can give you a rational argument, explanation as to why he's not. And, and that will lead you away from Jesus Christ. But if you have the rock like Peter did, you have that solid foundation in your heart, that witness of the Holy Spirit. That's, that's the doctrine of Christ. That's the solid foundation that all of us as Christians build upon. And I want to testify to you that that's why Satan attacks the Book of Mormon. Because the point of the Book of Mormon is to unlock that spirit of revelation, of prophecy and revelation, so that we can be prophets and revelators, every single one of us, knowing that Jesus is the Christ, because we have that prophetic witness from the Holy Spirit written upon our hearts. So I want to reflect Alma's question, Alma and Amiel's question for the, uh, I believe it's for the Zoramites. I'm, I'm going on memory here, so someone correct me if I'm wrong. I want to ask you, have you been truly born again? Do you have a philosophical testimony of Jesus Christ, or do you have that solid foundation of revelation from the Holy Spirit in your written in your heart? And I want you to know that I love and accept you as a fellow Christian. You're welcome to worship with us in the fellowship if, if you have a philosophical understanding. If you see Jesus Christ and you say, hey, you know what? This guy had some great things to say, and I buy all of it. You know, we welcome you. And the reason why is because I know that as you do the good works of God, that testimony will get written upon your, upon your heart. It will be written here. The Holy Spirit will move you. 
you'll start studying the Book of Mormon. You'll start studying the New Testament, the, the Gospels. You'll start studying the Torah. And that will lead you from that philosophical understanding to that true knowledge, the true faith that's written here from the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. And so what I want to ask you this day is, do you know that Jesus is the Christ? Not do you think it, do you know it? Is it a part of who you are? Because that is the true doctrine of Christ. And if you have that, then you are God's. You, when I say God's, I mean you belong to God. You are a child of God. Clarify there. So that's my message. And it is my prayer that if you don't know Jesus yet, that you will grow to know him. That you will begin your walk in Teshuvah meditating, praying, and listening to the Holy Spirit so that you can know, like I know, that Jesus is the Christ. That's my message, and I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.